<laughs> oh, hey now. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the 2018 NCAA lacrosse tournament. Uh, I want to make a shout out to the Duke Booster Club and uh, mom. And one more question. Memorial Day is on Monday, and it's a big grilling holiday, so we have a debate question for you today. Um, is a hot dog a sandwich? Gosh. Um. Their names define the sport of lacrosse at the highest level. Four programs annually listed among the elite, linked not only by their past success, but by the expectations placed upon them. So don't, for a second, doubt yourself. Just keep playing. We have a long way to go, but it's paying attention to the details. How great do you want to be? Game time. It's in the back, you better believe it. We all play for one reason, show out dominating this season. It's time. Take that dub with us, so we leaving. You not with us in the streets, and brave, I turn it up for the season. Game time. It's the season, 2018. In the sport of lacrosse, it's been said that legends are born in May. Yet not all have reached the final chapter of the season. North Carolina's magical run of 2016 could not be duplicated, their postseason hopes ending before they could begin. For the Ohio State Buckeyes, who made it to the championship a year ago, a final second loss in the Big Ten tournament prevented them from receiving an invite to the big dance. And for Syracuse, a first round heartbreaker at home against Cornell meant the end of their road. But as the Duke Blue Devils braced for the quarterfinals in Annapolis, only time will tell if their own legendary tradition of peaking in May will come true. But first, breakfast and a Duke tradition. So this morning, I'd like to pass this honor um, on to Pete Conley. Woo! Because it's all out here, the spread's outside. I got to memorize everything, come back, present it. I'm looking for some staff members. We got fruit, muffins, whatever these are, some strudels. We got like the lock on this. Potatoes, sausage, some French toast sticks. Ooh. We have muffins, uh, strudels, an assortment of strudels. <laughs> Breakfast potatoes and French toast sticks. Sticks. And upstairs, a feeling of purpose as the Blue Devils pack their bags. We're, we're prepared, watch as much film as we need to. Now it's just about execution. For the seniors, work so hard for this, and being able to deliver that for them would I mean the world to I know the younger guys. And just one more week hanging out with the guys, chilling in hotel rooms, eating meals together. That's what it's really about. As the season's grown and we've gone farther, you'd start to notice the, the younger guys certainly starting to really force and uh, place an emphasis on, on winning and, and winning for the seniors to leave a great legacy. If you're going to be successful, um, you know, in the tournament in May, um, everybody needs to make a play. Uh, it's not about your stars. It's, it's, if it's a one-man show, if it's a Justin Gutterding show, we're not going to advance. In the fall, you can make mistakes and people were like, oh, he's just a freshman, you know? And now it's like, now it's like you got to make the play in front of you. One spot remains to be claimed for championship weekend. It'll be Johns Hopkins or Duke. The last of the four quarterfinal matchups. They were definitely out for some blood after we beat them on their home field in the playoffs last year. A lot of talented shooters, really talented lacrosse players, and for us trying to get as physical with them as we could, try to take them out of their game. And playing in Baltimore was almost like we were playing in front of a Hopkins home crowd. Duke was a mainstay at championship weekend for a long time. But for this senior class, 0 for 3, this is their last chance. They've been on a mission this season to get back to Gillette Stadium. Skip pass to Gutterding. Beating the crease, finding the freshman Joe Robinson. Duke on the board first. 
Shot clock against two. Gutterding. Robertson, a kick save. The rebound and a score. Joey Manown, 2 nothing Duke. Gutterding. Gutterding, the lefty. Rolls inside. Save Turnbull. Gutterding on the follow. Manown gets the step. His second. And it's 4-1 Blue Devils. But Hopkins and their vocal fans wouldn't go down without a fight. And the Blue Jays cash in with the extra man, Jake Fox, the junior. Keo inside to Vallis. The Blue Devils would make another run late in the first half to hold their advantage. Smith wins another faceoff. He can go. Smith scores! Wall scores! Individual effort by the sophomore. And Justin Gutterding would make history in the third. 20 seconds, Justin Gutterding gets the pick for Montgomery. Rolls back. Gutterding on the inside roll has just tied the Division I career goals record, equaling Zach Greer with 206 career goals. Yet in the season, nothing is for certain. Patrick Frazier. Frazier. Tiptoe the sideline. Feeding inside. Hubler the goal. The late hit draws a flag. Christopher Hubler again. Inside. Ball. It's a one goal game. With their season on the line in the fourth quarter, the Blue Devils would turn to their rising star, freshman Nakai Montgomery. Montgomery, the freshman, responds for Duke. Okay, Montgomery. Montgomery, two in the cage! Can someone tell this kid he's a freshman? You get the sense, Kark, the last two weeks, we are watching a star being born. Putting the icing on the cake was a familiar face, this time for the record race. Gutterding. Oh! Justin Gutterding scores! And that's the record. His third of the day, the 207th of his career, a new Division I career goals record. The Duke seniors have their trip to championship weekend. I know I get put in the spotlight, but our, our senior class is so determined. It was incredible, going back to Boston, baby. Best feeling in the world, we're not done yet, though. Fresh off their quarterfinal victory, Duke headed to Foxborough in the championship weekend with a visible swagger. Their opponent, top-ranked Maryland. It's really exciting to be back. Some we hadn't reached as a senior class, but I think that quickly wore off, and now we're practicing, getting ready to beat Maryland. The goal here is to win a national championship. The Blue Devils' success can be traced to a mix of youth and experience. The guiding hands of seniors Justin Gutterding and Danny Fowler. With the confidence of newcomers, Nakai Montgomery and Joe Robertson. You grow up watching so many amazing players come through this program, and uh, you, you dream of making an, an impact as soon as you come in. Just working all fall and uh, following the leadership of the seniors and the coaches, uh, still kind of surreal. What's been different the last two games as a freshman that's allowed you to kind of own this big stage? Trust. Yeah, 100%. Trust, confidence. Nakai hopes to walk in the footsteps of his role models, some of the most well-known midfielders in the game. Nakai, I noticed you wear number 15 um, as a freshman, and number 15 is a well-known number, especially amongst the Duke midfield core in the history of Blue Devil lacrosse. Uh, coincidence, or did you ask for that number? In high school, I wore 13, and Caputo, uh, he was the guy who recruited me in my recruiting process, and he told me, um, I want you to wear 15 your freshman year, and I was like, okay, like, cool. Talked to Miles about it, he was pumped. 15's like the coolest thing ever. Uh, obviously, just like growing up, like watching him and Deemer and Cohan, Jordan Wolf, all those guys play. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's really cool. I'm 
matter what, this is my last week with the guys. It's just been an incredible ride. At the same time, I would trade all the records I have for, for a national championship this weekend. Others are saying, act like you've been there, but uh, you know, not, no one really has, has been there for this, this senior class. Um, so certainly our message is to just trust the coaching staff. The term Final Four, I guess it's cool and all, but it tr truly is the next game. And it's just as the Villanova game was, you know, win or go home, or the Johns Hopkins game was win or go home. Uh, you know, when, when push comes to shove, it, it is the next game. Semi-final number two underway. Here's Nakai Montgomery. The freshman star power continues to rise. Five goals in the first two rounds. And now the opening salvo of this second semifinal. 15 and Blues got some shake. Lowry, welcome home. Guys really are starting to buy in and, and believe in, in everyone. Montgomery to Smith. Up top, quickly! Double disaster for the Turks. We're just going out and having fun. We're enjoying it. It's not, it's not as many nerves when you're, when you're having fun. Montgomery to the cage! And that's two for the birthday boy! He has come to life for the postseason. That's his seventh goal of the NCAA tournament. Versatility. Duke's six-goal advantage gave them a stranglehold on momentum. There it is. Montgomery wants it. Montgomery! A first-half hat trick for the freshman. He's got more goals than anybody to play Division I lacrosse, and he adds to his tally. Yet the defending national champions would continue to put up a fight. The billow against Terry Lindsay. Wisnowskis finding DeMeo. And in the second half, despite the Blue Devils continuing to score, Maryland drew closer. Knows how to push the right buttons. Kelly inside, Kevin Kelly! His first goal of the afternoon. And after being down six, Maryland has closed to two. Rotan's just amped his man. Fairman, top shot! Oh, we got a one goal game! Game on. Now it's all of a sudden Duke's in the danger zone. Five seconds on the shot clock, a shot to score! The freshman, Joel Robertson, gives Duke a two-goal lead. Riley Walsh! Step down, City, you celebrated. The day belonged to Duke, and a manifestation of all their hard work. Got it. Robertson, score! Good Joey Manown over to Gutterman. Gutterman! It's in the bag, you better believe it. We all play for one reason. Show out, dominate in the season. It's time. Take that girl with us and believe in. You're not with us in the streets and brave. I'll turn it up for the season. Game time. And Duke has knocked off the defending champs. The Blue Devils will play for a fourth championship this decade. Monday against Yale. For Duke, advancing to the championship meant another milestone along their journey. But with the championship game only 48 hours away, the Blue Devils could only celebrate for a moment, beginning their preparation almost immediately. The day before the championship, Duke took to the practice field one final time, drawing up a game plan to combat Yale's blend of skill and physical talent. This game is, you know, it's what we've worked for so hard. You know, it's what personally worked for since, you know, three or four years old, you know, playing this game and growing up loving the sport. 
it's really cool. You know, it's unbelievable to have this opportunity to play for a national championship in our last game. But at the end of the day, it's uh, I'll look back on this afterwards and be all like, oh, that was so cool. That was this and that. Because right now we have a really good team in Yale on Monday, and it's really just about game planning for them and for me just doing my job. The Blue Devils are playing for their fourth title of the decade, a feat that would place them in elite company. And while the eyes of the lacrosse world were firmly fixed on Duke and Yale, it is perhaps a voice not seen that most deeply proves the transcendent nature of the game. You know, as a first generation son of immigrants, for not just me, but my family, sports was a way in. Um, it was a way into America, and baseball was initially our entry point. Sports were not only a passion, but also an escape. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was 12 years old, so that was my childhood. And she had cancer three times, beat it twice. And sports was what I went to. Um, sports was where I found comfort and where I found solace as a young child. Anish found his calling as a broadcaster, but it was a championship game a year ago where everything came full circle. So last year was my first lacrosse championship game that I was calling for ESPN. And uh, it fell on May 29th, which was Memorial Day, Monday. And uh, 17 years prior in 2000, my mom passed away on May 29th, which that year happened to be Memorial Day. And you know, one of the things that stuck with me wasn't so much that it was the same day and it was Memorial Day. Those emotions come up every year. But it was the fact that we were in Massachusetts and we were in Boston. And uh, the last family vacation that uh, my whole family took together um, before my mom passed was to Boston. And we took a tour of Fenway Park. And I'll never forget it. They let you sit in the booth. And I remember sitting there. And, you know, I was 16 years old at the time and I'm, uh, sitting in the Fenway press box, looking out over the, you know, the field, staring at the green monster, and your, your mind kind of wanders. I, I always knew what I wanted to do when I was probably 14, 15 years old as a sports broadcaster, and you just think about how cool it would be to, to call a game. And I get out of the press box, and, and my mom kind of gives me a look, and you know, she was battling cancer at the time, and she said, you know, when you were sitting in there, I thought to myself that, that you know, one day you're gonna be out here calling games. And so for me last year, there were a lot of emotions. It wasn't just calling a championship game. It was May 29th, it was Memorial Day. It was in Boston where that memory, where my mom told me, that was the first time she told me, I see you doing this one day. Um, all that kind of came together. And it was sort of this emotional vortex that I had to try to navigate my way out of so I could focus on my game. But at the same time, I wanted to embrace sort of all that came with it. For niche. Further validation came both with the result and the sign. The whole story arc of Maryland's championship run. Um, John Tillman, their head coach, had lost his mother. And then there have been times in my life when I felt her presence, and it's been with the rain. And it rained in the middle of the game last year. And it was kind of this calming influence. And um, I kind of just thought to myself, she's here. Memorial Day marks the conclusion of the college lacrosse season. Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts is the backdrop as Yale has for its first NCAA lacrosse championship while Duke seeks its fourth title of the decade. It's your time. It's your time to be, right? To be who you are. To be the guy, to be the athlete, to be the lacrosse player, to be the team that you are that you become, and that you're still becoming. Today could be the best game you've ever played, individually and collectively. That's up to you. Don't back down, ever. Don't back down. That's not how you got here. You got here by accepting everything that was thrown in front of you, every obstacle that went your way. Make it happen today. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. On three, two, one, two, three. Yeah. Early on, it was Yale who took control. Jack Tyler beats Fowler upstairs. Yale on the board first. Shot upstairs and a score. Two for Jack Tyler. Got that good look. Three nothing Yale. 
Volk has been one of the best defenders in the country, even though he's a freshman. There's a shot to score. And as the game moved into the second quarter, the intensity continued to rise. Now Lowering on the invert. Got the save by Star. Here comes Manel. Inside the score. Brad Smith. And Duke has closed to the one. Welch to the wing. Robertson taps it. In the second half, Yale's athleticism continued to cause Duke trouble. Against the JT Giles Harris, Reeves with the bouncer, and he's on the board with his first goal. But the Blue Devils would not go away. Gutterman trying to get free, and Justin Gutterman, the answer for Duke. And in the fourth quarter, the Blue Devils would need one of their signature runs to get back into the game. Yale milling in retreat. Here comes Robertson. Took a shot to the head and still scores. Conley, back shot to score. And Duke has closed to within two. With two minutes to go, Duke's dreams were on the line with one final shot at glory. 12 seconds, Conley inside. Loose in front, Gunning has it. Fire save by Star. Yale's going to win it. And the Bulldogs with their first championship in NCAA history. In the end, the Blue Devils simply ran out of time. There was a little solace in how close they came. Yet while Duke's season did not end in a championship, the character and resilience of this team will long be remembered. I'd just like to say thank you to um, all my coaches and everyone I've played with. Um, it's been an incredible ride, and I can't believe it's over, and that's why I'm, I'm so upset. Um, obviously, I'm not happy that we didn't win, but um, I would have been upset either way because these are some of my best friends and um, Coach Janowski and, and Matt and, and Coach Caputo and, and Ned have, have been like fathers to me and they, um, it's going to be so hard to say goodbye to them. As Duke exits Gillette Stadium, it's hard not to think back to where the journey of the season began. First day of the 2018 season right here, guys. The rise in the fall and the anticipation of what's ahead. This is bigger than us, way bigger than me, way bigger than you. As lessons were learned, simple phrases like boom and thumbs up became rallying cries. We want to keep his memory alive, thumbs up. Bonds are strengthened on and off the field, a prelude of what's on the horizon. And after months of training, finally, the opening whistle. <laughs> leading to a March marathon with contenders under pressure. All we have is each other. Okay? It's time to go out there and compete for one another. April moments of truth. On the doorstep, Robertson! Where dreams were realized. Bob Berry! And shattered. The second season, a chance at glory, culminating in a championship run. The Duke seniors have their trip to championship weekend. For some, the season marked a beginning. And to others, it's a culmination of a life spent in devotion to a game. How a simple ball and stick can shape the soul remains a mystery. But one thing is certain, the effects of this season, 2018, will be remembered for seasons to come. <laughs>